I'm Logan from with the Backwoodsman's Institute. Today in this video, I'm going to be talking about turkey decoy setups. I'm going to pass along the tips and the tricks that I picked up through my years of hunting. One thing I want you all to know is there's hundreds of ways to put up your decoys in the turkey field. If a Tom wants them bad enough, he's going to come in. So I'm not saying my way is the only way by any means. I'm just going to show you the tactics that I use when I'm setting up my decoys. First thing I'm going to talk about is the type of decoys I like to use. The decoys I like to use when I'm turkey hunting are lightweight, flexible, foldable decoys. These are two examples right here. This one's made out of soft plastic. This one's made out of foam. But both of them are easily stuck in a backpack, hauled out to the field, easily man-packed. So that's why I like them. I don't have to tote around a big, hard plastic body of a turkey or whatever. I can just throw them in a backpack and head in the woods. But this is an HS Strut hen decoy, and this is a Feather Flex hen decoy. We've had this one for years. It's seen better days. But both of these, like I said, work very well. I just recently purchased these, which I love them, because if you've ever seen a turkey in the sunlight, it just shimmers. All the sun reflects off his feathers, and it, it just glows. This right here has an awesome paint job with that soft plastic. It's got copper tones, green tones all in, that, in, them, uh, in them feathers right there, and it replicates a real turkey out in, uh, in the woods. So that's why I like these decoys. With the foam, this is old, but you don't get the same kind of uh, detail with the foam. So these soft plastic ones I like, but all you gotta do whenever you pack them, right where that stake goes in that hole, just blow some air into it, and you're ready to roll. All right, here's the three decoy setup that I got. I got two hands and a jake. And I'm gonna carry this mini flock with me every time I go turkey hunting. That doesn't mean I'm gonna put all three of the decoys out in one setup. I'll go into that a little bit later, when to pick and choose. But like I said, two hens and a jake, and I chose to get a jake. You can get a full strut and tom or whatever, but the thing that I see with full strut and toms is there's a lot of birds that are going to get scared away from that full strut and tom. They're not the dominant birds in the flock. They don't want to take on that bird. But with a jake, any bird, any tom that feels he's you know older than this jake, more dominant than this jake, is going to come whoop him up whenever he's around hens that he wants to breed. So you get a lot more toms to come in, you can pick and choose, and with a full strut and tom, you might scare away a decent shooting tom from your decoy setup, so out of your shooting range, basically. So that's why I chose to go with a Jake. Anything bigger than him is gonna come in and try to whoop up on him, so that's why I got him. One of the most important things to know when you're turkey hunting is what path that gobbler's gonna take when he's coming in. Best way to do that is to locate him, and you can do that a couple different ways. One, you can get him to answer to a call, so he gobbles, you know where he's at. Are you roosting the night before, so you know what trees he's at. And then you sit down, set your decoy set up between that and that tree, and then you call, so you know he's coming that direction. All right, so I talked about the most important thing being knowing where that tom is and what path he's gonna take. So, the first thing I wanna talk about, the most important thing to do with your decoy setup is never set your decoy directly between the tom, which is the camera right there, and me. So then he's looking over, looking his attention on this decoy, and I'm sitting behind him, and if I move to bring my gun up or whatever, if I move just a little bit, I'm in direct eyesight with him, and it'll get my position away. So what you wanna do is you wanna set your decoys out at a 45 off to e either side you want to. It really doesn't matter. As long as you are not the, in direct line of sight of that bird, his attention is going to be on this decoy. That's what's good with using decoys for hunting. All right, now let's talk about how far we set our decoys away from us on them 45 angles from our setup. I like to set mine anywhere from 10 to 20 yards. And I don't want to get any closer than that because I don't want to be in that direct line of sight for that tom coming in. And I don't want to be very much farther because a tom can get held up outside of your decoys, if he's 30 yards past your decoys and your, your decoy is 30 yards out, then that tom's 60 yards away, holding up, strutting, waiting for this hen to come over. So that's why I like to keep it from 10 to 20. Now with these decoys here, the stake that runs to the ground runs up all the way to this knob right here, and this basically, the decoy is basically balanced on it. So if the wind blows, whatever, they're gonna, they're gonna spin around, give some lifelike movement, like they're searching or feeding, in that case or whatever. But that's good in some cases, but in other cases, I don't want my decoys to move. And I'm gonna talk All right, now let's talk about a hung up bird. A hung up bird is a tom that's outside of your range for either a shotgun, bow, or whatever firearm you're using to take a turkey. 
he's outside of that range. And he's doing that because the hen's supposed to go over to him to breed. So this next tip that I'm gonna give you is how I set up my hens so that Tom has to keep coming in closer and closer. All right, I'm gonna talk about something that a lot of hunters don't think is necessary when setting up decoys, but to me, it makes perfect sense. Now in the springtime of the turkey's mating season, it's nature's way that the hen goes to the tom. That's why he's sitting around strutting his stuff, gobbling and doing whatever. He's getting that hen's attention, so she wants to go over there and breed with him. Now, when you're hunting, you're going against mother nature 100%. You're trying to get that tom over to you. So when I use my decoys, my hen decoys, if you are the tom and I know you're right there, and this is the path you're gonna take to me, I'm gonna set my decoys up to where they won't spin with the wind Lock them down stationary, and I want them to be looking this direction, all right? What that's gonna make that Tom think, he's gonna be strutting and wondering, why is his head not coming over, whatever. And he knows, oh, I can't see her head's going the other way, whatever, so he's gotta get closer. And then he might try to get around in front of him, or he's gonna try to do something to get their attention. And that's gonna bring him in close so I can get a shot. So that's what I do with my decoys. I have them facing away from the Tom, my hand, so he thinks that they can't make eye contact and otherwise she would come to him. So he's got to get closer. So that's one thing I love to do when I'm setting up my hen decoys. Now, as you see here, I rigged this up with just 550 cord, green 550 cord. I made a slit in the plastic body. And what this does, I wrapped it around there. And it's going to keep the wind from turning. I can turn it, but the wind, it's going to take a real strong wind to make this decoy turn around. Another thing you can do to keep that tom from getting held up and you don't want to lock down your decoys, you want them to spin, you can set your decoys up behind you off at 45s, same distance 10 to 20 yards from you. The only thing I don't like about this because is a lot of stuff can go wrong here. You're putting yourself between the decoy and the bird, so if the bird gets, the tom gets held up 30 yards from your decoy, and your decoy, decoy is 20 yards back, that's putting the bird almost on top of you. So that's how you can combat him being held up. But one thing that can go wrong is that bird can circle around you and then you gotta turn around in the tree, you gotta do a lot more movement and you're gonna more likely give your position away. So that's another thing you can do, but I like to keep everything in my eyesight and in my shooting lanes and my, my, my peripheral vision right here so I can see anything that's coming up. All right, like I said, I take a mini flock into the woods anytime I'm gonna take decoys out there. And with just them three decoys, there's a multitude of decoy setups I can use. First one's gonna be the lonely hen. All right, with that lonely hen, how I use that one hen decoy is in the woods. That's what I like to use it, I like to call. The thing is, you don't even need a decoy when you're calling a turkey through the woods. You wanna use the element of surprise. But if, if I use a decoy in the woods, I'm gonna set it up where he can see it. In trail, where he, if he's coming into that open spot, he can see it 100 yards off and he knows that's where it's gonna be. But just by a sound, they can pick you out. So you don't need a decoy if you're gonna be hunting in the woods. You can ambush them basically by just bringing them in with sound. But if you're gonna, if you're gonna use a decoy in the woods, I recommend just the lonely hen. All right, if I'm gonna set up decoys on the edge of a field where I know a tom can see it from a long ways off, I'm gonna set up a minimum of two out there. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna entice him to come over here. Whether it's two hands or two, uh, a hand and a jake or whatever, or two hands and a whole jake, the whole mini flock out. The minimum of two out there is what I like to use. Now when I set up using my mini flock, let's say the camera is the tom, the direction tom's coming from. I put my two hands farther away and I put the jake up front. And I put the jake facing him and I like to lock down my two hands out here so they keep their head away and they act like they're not paying attention to the tom who could possibly gobble or strutting. And then this Jake right here, the tom knows that he can see him. And it's going to make him mad because <clears throat> he's not running away yet. So that's going to bring that tom in over. And I'm going to go through something real quick. You don't want to put your decoys too close together. I like to keep mine about five, five yards minimum between them. Because what will happen, that tom will come in and he'll strut in here in between all these decoys. You don't want to make him feel clustered and cramped, otherwise he'll spook out of there. Now if two toms come in, one of them probably going to attack the, the subordinate tor turkey. And that tom is actually a subordinate tom. And the, the dominant tom is going to make his way to the hens. And he's going to breed them 
while he's the other Tom's beating up this guy. So that's how you know which one is going to be the dominant Tom, the one that sneaks around back while this guy's doing the fight. That one's going to be the dominant. Now, there's a couple different setups you can do with just the hen and the Jake decoy. One of my favorite ones to get a gobbler to come over, to entice him to come over, is to set up a breeding set with this so it look like Jake's trying to move in on his gal. And all you're going to do is take your hen decoy, head up, just like that, alert hen, and you're going to set her on the ground. What I like to do is take a stick, stick it in there, and put her on top so the wind's not going to knock her over. All right, now that I got my hen on the ground, I'm going to take my Jake, I'm going to stick him in the ground on a stake right behind her. And you can use a, a full strap tom decoy, put a little bit behind or whatever, but this is going to make look like this Jake is moving in on that tom's gal. And it's going to make mad and he's going to come in and whoop on this Jake. So this is a good setup for a Jake and a hen in an open field where Tom could see it from a ways away.